All right, everybody, welcome to Word on the Street, powered by Lane Solutions Group. Happy Halloween to everybody. What's going on, crew? How's everybody doing? Everyone doing great. Fine? Excellent. Very good. Uh, I like the uh, I like the sweater there, Kyle, with the uh, Happy Halloween. Show off, show that off for everybody. Yeah, it's supposed to glow in the dark. It lights up, but uh, the battery is definitely broken in this thing. Thanks a lot, Christmas tree shop. <laughs> Lights up and glows in the dark. That's pretty impressive. That's quite oh, yeah. uh, quite the sweater. It's nice since we're not too. since we're not streaming live, can anybody else hear Trey? He's very light. Okay, okay. Hang on, we're having issues. Say, like, seriously, can you hear this? Check, check. One, two, one, that's, two. Check. That's better. 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 When the music was on, we're just experiencing all kinds. I did turn the music down just a little bit. All right, let's try it again. See if this will work. Okay, can you hear me? All right, in the microphone now, everybody. Mm -hmm. like amateur hour here on word in the street everybody we're just you know we've only been doing this year and a half we have no idea what's going on but anyways let's uh let's get started so greg what's up man how's everything in chicago so you're going as a dad for halloween it looks like is that right yeah I, maybe i'll throw on some like a mask or something but who knows <laughs> that's really about it <laughs> i this year for halloween i've been tasked with sitting at the house and the, we're not doing the door now we're still putting the table of treats out front so I'm sitting in the front yard, creating a bonfire and keeping that going while everybody else is going out trick or treating. So. so you truly are playing the role of dad and you're not doing the honor system. You're not just leaving a bucket of candy for kids to come by and grab. You're actually going to be there monitoring a little bit. Well, I mean, we'll put a pot, like several piles on the table, the whole non-contact piece, some. and then yeah. they can come grab a pile. And if they grab two, I really won't care. But <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right that's right so you should fire. be you should be around the fire cleaning your shotguns and that will that will probably you know monitor the situation as well i, I yeah. don't have any shotgun i got some knives that might you there know you sharpen, kind of get, get the whetstone out oh, sorry dude. yeah yeah that would be <laughs> that might that might accomplish the same purpose so tyler you're going as a hunter i see i love it so yeah i was gonna say i got yeah. a couple shotguns for you greg we'll send those go. right over <laughs> come on yeah, by Working on cleaning those. Rob, what's up, man? I haven't seen you in a while. How you doing, bud? <clears throat> there we go. Yeah, you need to wear that the entire show. Can you put that on? Got a rubber band? Put that on? No? That's unfortunate. Uh, us with glasses, it's very hard to wear a mask. Just throwing yeah. that out there for the nearsighted and farsighted individual. Thank you, Kyle. You saved me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a mask as well that I can't wear because the damn glasses. <laughs> See, they don't account for stuff like that. This, I mean, these manufacturers when they make stuff, they're they're kind of uh, they're 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 they got some preferences for sure. Right hand versus left handed glass wearing, yeah, it's a problem. Nico, you look like you're in a dentist chair. <laughs> no, I'm actually sitting outside at my uh, at my house. Okay, okay, so that's a window behind you. All right, yeah, it's hard to tell. Hard to tell with the blur, but it does kind of look like you're leaning back a little bit. So you know. Uh, I'm sitting up and like the camera is like looking up at me, which Super is really, low. yeah, it's not. I think you should run with the dentist uh, story. That was a good one. Just run with that. Get somebody to come like, you know, work on your mouth there for a minute. No, not going to get that done. All right, cool. All right, everybody. Well, uh, Halloween is upon us. It's Sunday this year, which uh, you know, is it? Is Sunday a good day for Halloween to be on with the trick-or-treating in school the next day? What's the best day for Halloween to be on? Saturday. What do you guys think? Sunday's Saturday, the worst Friday? day. Sunday's the worst. Number one. Worst. This the worst. Why Wednesday the worst? kind of stinks, too. Wednesday. No, Wednesday. It, at least Wednesday, you know that Halloween, like, the trick-or-treaters come out on Wednesday. When it's Sunday, you got the, like, oh, is it going to be Saturday? Is it going to be Sunday? <laughs> You think that's we should come out that's the day that they can go get free candy? Well, I think what he's getting at is that some places they will have like, if it's a Sunday for religious reasons, uh, they do the trick or treating and the celebration on a Saturday. So mm -hmm. you don't know if it's on really? a Sunday. Are oh. they, did they get past that? Are they doing Sunday trick or treating? Okay. Are they doing, yeah. yeah that's a good, good point. That's a good point. Straight Catholic here too. So they have, they have all these rules that you got to follow. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. Well, we do, we do a truck or treat at church, and so we got a lot of kids that were taken out of the circulation of trick or treating with our event. Although my kids want to go trick or treating after that event as well, so we may be double dipping 
Um, but it's kind of interesting. Um, I know that they, uh, they, they pushed back daylight savings till after Halloween, what about five, six years ago, maybe a little longer than that, 10 years ago, so that it could be a little bit lighter, but I think kids still come in the dark anyways. I don't think that would really change anything. Does, does it shut down like it's dark around your, your neck of the woods? They, they put a thing out here in Chicago. I think it ends at seven 30. They, they, they gave us, oh, a, asked people they gave us like a color sheet. I don't know if it's the, from the alderman or what that you can put on your, you know, it says trick or treater. You can put on your window. Trick or treaters welcome until seven thirty. Mm, okay. I mean, basically, um, just don't they'll be dark by then for sure. You, you turn the light off. That's what we do in ours. We just turn the light off, yeah. and then that's the sign that don't don't come knocking on our door. I don't know if that's how it is where you are, but you know, we'll see what happens. We've got a fire pit in the middle of our cul-de-sac. I'm pretty sure there's going to be some uh, some people out there for quite a while on Halloween night. I would imagine. I would think Friday would be the best because I always like having an activity on Friday. I feel like when you have an activity on Friday, it makes the weekend feel longer. Anybody else feel that way? I, yeah, we, so, we, had a, uh, we had a family wedding last Friday and I feel that felt that way. Saturday came, we were done, we were home. We still had the whole weekend. So. I know, I don't know what it is. It's not like it's not no additional time, but I feel like if we do stuff on Friday night, the weekend just feels longer for whatever reason, but I don't know. Just, I think it's because you you like count Friday as part of the weekend at that point because like you're looking forward to whatever you're doing that night. Um, which like is actually why I there. like doing my events <laughs> on Saturdays because then like I I complete the 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 Friday so then like my weekend seems shorter. Hmm. Yeah. It's like I'm working on a Saturday. You want yeah. your weekend to be shorter? I don't know. I follow that. I'm a workaholic. We really don't want to go into into my Enough. my theories of work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I do like to work, and it's hard to stop. And my kids will like they kill. Them. Like my daughter, my daughter literally said, "Dad, do you think you can go one hour this weekend without touching your phone? Just one hour." That's all she's asking. I'm like, "Dang, this like I must be really bad if she's only you asking know for an hour. You know she doesn't think I can do it. You know it's bad if she's cutting it to an hour as a challenge." I know that's really bad. Like it's not even like half a day or four. Isn't hours. that role supposed to be reversed? Like, aren't you supposed to be telling her to get off of her phone? Well, we she doesn't have a phone. She's thirteen. We she doesn't have a phone, so we don't have to worry about that yet. But it is a problem. I've had I've heard comments both from my wife and from my kids recently that I'm on the phone a lot. And you know, it's probably like, I get it because I work on the phone. But then the weekends, like sometimes I want to be on the phone to check scores or to just be on Twitter or things like that, right? But it is becoming a problem. Uh, there's no doubt about it. There's the, I, I'm looking at my statistics that they now show us, which is miserable. Screen uh, time. You know, yeah, that's, that's the word. I mean, screen time is great for parents. It's horrible for yourself. Like it's terrible to look at what I'm doing myself. It's uh, it's pretty telling in terms of uh, where I'm wasting my time. Uh, so my wife has a photo album of us in front of certain, you know, whatever you, wherever you take your selfies at of me just sitting like this. And taking whatever picture it is. <laughs> oh, Mount Rushmore. So you're, you're having fun with it. You're actually just like trying to make it. Yeah. 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 I don't know if they would think that, yeah. I don't know if they would agree that that's fun. I don't think See, I'm one of those people who like. Hear me now, guy. I'm one of those people who just never disconnects. And, you know, now my wife is sitting out here with me so she can, you know, check my math as I go along. But like, even like when I've taken my family to like Disney on vacations and stuff like that, like I still have to have some connection to work because I need to make sure that whatever is going on with a customer or anything that I'm dealing with, I, I know what I have to deal with when I get back. So well, it's not even like, you, you know, <laughs> I'm going to fix your problem right now. It's being able to tell people I'm dealing with, you know, hey, I, I'm aware of it. I'll fix it when I get back. See, I, I would say this. I, that would drive me crazy to be connected like that if I'm on vacation, I'm actually on vacation. This year, um, this year in, in July, we were in Wisconsin. It was the first time in probably a couple of years that I fully unplugged from uh, from work. And um, it actually, like after two days, it actually felt nice. It, it was uncomfortable for a couple of days, but after two days, it felt really nice. And I had the out of office request. And I, the, the best thing I did this year that I'd never done before is I prepped everybody in my circle of influence at work. I said, hey, I'm gone, not available, fix it. Let me know what happens, I'll help out when I get back. And I had very limited emails you when I got back. You still had one guy after you, didn't you? Uh, you know, had a few guys, but that's okay. You know, not worried about that. 
It was Nico, good. Was... Nico, you have to stay involved because <clears throat> as a ringleader and a storyteller, you know, you can't you can't let it go, man. You got to keep it going. You got to be Story. available. Well, because I don't have to necessarily take care of it myself, but I have to make sure that it does get taken care of. Yeah. See, I think I think preparation before you leave is where that all comes into play. If you can train people well, and here's here's how I feel about it: if I can't leave for a week without things continuing to run, I don't know that I'm I don't know that I'm being a good leader. But that's how I think about it: being critical to myself. You know, if I can't pull myself out of the equation, then I I'm, I don't know that I'm prepping people or preparing people, training people in a way that really makes sense. I think we all need to have our number twos. And we all need to be able to. I mean, what happens if I get hit by a car on the way out of here? Is everything going to collapse? I hope not. You know, I hope not. So I, I, for me, I, that's I, that's where I am. Is like, okay, I want to prepare people enough that when I leave, they don't need me. You know, um, some people kind of. Look, I think that intimidates some people because you feel like you're kind of working yourself out of a job. But I think that actually makes the you know the uh, company more efficient and powers people to make decisions and just makes it better for everybody. So, I mean, none of us are medical doctors either. No one dies like if you missed something for an hour. No one's dying on an operating table. Like it's like the whole like always be. Let's hope not. Me. I hate if that it. happens, then I, I need to know what happened. Uh, yeah, plus, that's, yeah, something that's major that's occurred. That's <laughs> I think that's you would know if expertise. you were a doctor, right? <laughs> I did cover two right. loads Friday night from the wedding reception, uh, <laughs> so I, I felt a little bad about that. But I, I literally, you know, I did, they were for one was a Saturday, one was a Sunday pickup, but I got them all confirmed and everything. Are they? dispatched him when i got back I making thought, money you know, while you're enjoying the wedding cake well done I'm, i mean that's you know i'm an idiot though probably you know <laughs> you know with with airpods and cell phones i mean there's a lot you could probably do at a wedding or some sort of event without people really knowing i mean like yeah. watching a football game i could watch watch something and you know get away with that but my, my son has put a sign right. up in the uh, in our living room with the uh kind of the ghostbusters thing no wow. phones yeah so, yeah yeah. Hey Raquel, Especially with Aaron, the phone what's up, this girls? big, just imagine what I could get done in a oh, wedding. Oh, you got the new flip? Is that the foldable? I, I love this phone, yes. That's not a phone. That is good night. That's a beast. Excuse me, sir. Your tablet is ringing. <laughs> yeah. That's, Dude, I was watching that's YouTube big. videos on this before I went to bed last night, and it was it was magical. It was like having a TV in my bed. Because if it's that close to your face, yeah. it feels like a big screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Wow. Oh gosh. Right. Hi guys. Raquel, Happy Friday. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'll show you what I'm doing here. So I, I'm still on the virtual conference here on this screen, uh -huh. working on these screens. And then I'm here with you guys. And here, so multitasking if, you're, if you haven't yet the virtual conference, you can still join and you can get everyone's downloads and recordings. Okay. So I did register, but I'm too busy to watch on like right now I'm going to watch okay. on demand. I, I have access to that, right? <laughs> Yes. Yes. And you should have gotten the Excellent. link with all of the uh, workbook pages and like, it's like yeah, 50 pages it's... long. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciate you putting that together. It's really cool. Are you guys going to do more of these or is this your only one? What do you think? Um, as of right now, it's just this one, but they're talking about maybe doing more and still trying to sell it. So it's a lot of really yeah. good information. Yesterday was a lot of entrepreneurial information, a lot of marketing. Um, we had a, an accountant talking today and yeah. an energy leader um, talking already. And now they're talking about um, self-development and how to how to guide your, your team. So it's really cool. Nice, very cool. Well, thanks for putting that on. And I'm looking forward to getting some of that content when I uh, when I have a down moment, which is tough, sure. but I'm looking forward to get to it soon. So I'll definitely <laughs> listen to, you, to your portion for sure. You guys were Aaron, talking about um, oh, sorry. not Keep having, on. Keep on. that's okay. You guys were talking about not having, uh, getting away from your phones. That is something that I've added into my life. That's why I go hiking so that I can get my phone out of my hand and in my bag and be present. It is highly important for all of us to really, really reconnect with our, our loved ones and people around us. So make sure you add that into yeah. your day. <laughs> For sure. I think it's important, but gosh, it's so hard sometimes. I, I, I was sharing before you guys jumped on that my daughter challenged me to go one hour this weekend without touching my phone when I'm awake, of course. Um, and, and, I got, huh. and, and Greg made a good point. If her challenge was only one hour, that's really bad. <laughs> like it wasn't <laughs> half a day, wasn't a whole day. It was a stinking hour. And if I can't pull it off, it's going to be pretty rough. The really funny thing is like she gave you less time to be without your phone before you like showed your addiction than like an alcoholic gets delirium tremens. I'm just saying. 
it's pretty embarrassing. I'm not going to lie. We'll see. I'll, I'll let you guys know how it goes. I couldn't make it an uh, hour either, point. just so we know. I mean, it's not like I bought a comically large phone because I believe in putting it down ever. Yeah. It's so bad that sometimes I'll open it up and just look at it, and then I'll just put it right back in my pocket. Like, I don't even know what I'm doing. I got to watch. It's not like I'm looking at the time. It's like, it's, it's ridiculous. But yeah, anyways. Aaron, what's up, girlfriend? How are you? Good. Very good. Great. Great to see you. Great to see you. Thanks. Good to have you on the show. Um, so we've got a few costumes today. As you guys can see, I'm a Colombian soccer player. We've got a big match coming up against Brazil soon. Here, in Why didn't you we'll dress up as a golf player or golf, whatever you call this? Well, that's why I dress up as every week. I mean, that's kind of that's kind of how I dress up. But this uh, this shirt is customized. Like it's like yeah, it's uh, it's I'm on a team, everybody. I'm official. So. That's what I'm going to go as this year. Was we were 24 about doing your number in, in high school? 24 was my number in college. Or yeah. College. And I've got a guy, I've got a guy on my team, John Alba, who this guy was sly. Like we were just having a conversation one day, like three months ago, just having a conversation. And he's like, oh, you played college sports, didn't you? I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, what'd you play? Played basketball. Oh, cool. Cool. What was your number? Told him 24. Like it was like th this, that conversation moved on. Totally forgot about it. A month later, I go down to Columbia. He's got this jersey with my name and number on it. Pretty oh. impressive. So shout well out to done. John Alba, our training manager in awesome. sales for that, who uh, hooked me up for sure. So yeah, we were thinking about doing Chronicles from Narnia this year. We couldn't pull that off. It was just, you know, too much work and we don't want to buy costumes. But uh, so I think I'm going to go as a soccer player. I think that's what I'm going to do. Just rock it. And uh, yeah, that's so good. How about you guys? Are you guys doing any dressing up for Halloween? Does anybody on this call dress up? For yeah. Aaron, nothing? Before kids. I do all the time. Before <laughs> Before kids, you did? What'd you, okay, what was yeah. the best costume you had before kids? Um, my husband is 6'2", and I'm only 5'4", and we both dressed up as Oompa Loompas. It's, did, you, did you buy the costumes or did you make them? Made them. Made the costumes. Do you have any pictures of this? Do we have any I evidence? I do. I'll have, to, I'll have to find one. Yeah, shoot it over. We should have put it on for today. I would have I totally put that on. Well, today. I didn't know. I don't know what your know. agendas are each week. Well, you I always have this week of pictures at the end because, uh, you know, we got it's just it's great. So and I've got a couple of good ones today. So uh, it's a Halloween edition of this week of pictures. So looking forward to getting to, uh, to that. All right. So let's talk about a couple of things that are going on in the world today. First of all, we got fingers being pointed in regards to the supply chain. Now people are getting a little, you know, kind of like uh, frustrated and starting to blame other parties for what's happening with the supply chain as it continues to get better. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But before we go any further, we got some big news in social media. I don't know if you guys heard or not, but Trump started his own social media platform called Truth. That'll be interesting. We'll see how that goes. I think it's supposed to launch in a couple of months. And we heard yesterday that Facebook is changing its name to Meta, which doesn't quite have the ring. I'm not sure exactly, you know, they're going to, you know, I don't know what that's all about. So with that, he said, uh, and our discussions about uh, cell phone addiction, which we clearly, some of us have, we're going to go ahead and do a quick poll about social media called the social media machine. So go ahead and do that while we listen to, uh, let's see, we're going to listen to next. Who we got? We got uh, the flies with got you. By the way, is there a better name for a nineties band than butthole surfers? That's so that was two songs ago, butthole surfers. I would have liked to have been in that meeting as they thought through their name. What should we call ourselves? Uh, maybe the surfers. No, no. Maybe the big surfers. No. Better than the story behind the name. Corn. Butthole surfers. How, well, I don't, Another story behind the name Corn with a K, Corn, Corn with yes. a K, right? Yeah. Corn well, with do a K. Tell. Do tell. Uh, it's really inappropriate and involves an anus and finding corn back there. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's not really get into that. Yeah, that no. is weird. Google I would imagine it. that there's several. I imagine there's several band names in the '90s that had uh, that were created under the influence of some, you know, potential paraphernalia. And, also, tools. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. All right, go ahead and take these questions. There's, uh, there's a lot. Of, there's six questions. Can you believe that? What was I thinking, man? There's a lot of questions. A lot of reading today. That's right. Looking forward to hearing your feedback on this. Tyler, uh, hunting starts when? When are you going hunting? Did I already start. Did you go last week? Yeah, we got dead week? birds in the freezer. How many? Uh, we ended up shooting about 10. The group limit was okay. 12, so we were fine. Okay. And how long does that, like, how long is that? How many meals are you going to get out of that? 
Oh, I mean, they're the they're basically the size of a chicken. Okay. Okay. Very good. And and is that with your group? How many people in your group? Oh, we had three. Are in you the group. considered a group? Okay. Between three and four. Okay. Very good. Colin, no, Ruffin, you... what's up, buddy? Good to be no, here. No, Sorry, he's got a haircut, man. Look at that. He got a fresh. Fresh uh, fade there. Well, I was trying to lose some weight and I took it off where I could, you know? <laughs> <laughs> do what you got to do. <laughs> What's that, Nico? What were you saying? Oh, I was going to ask Tyler because uh, I thought he said he was going pheasant hunting last week. Like, do you only shoot like pheasants or is it just like any bird you see? Um, so <laughs> just shoot pheasants. Everything. <laughs> pheasants. I Vulture. Oh, got right. it. I've Cardinal. never been hunting, Boom. so I didn't know if it was like a season, like, you know, <laughs> pheasants are in season, but if, like you shoot a deer, you're screwed. So if you came in from out of state, you could shoot at pheasants. But since I'm in state, obviously, I've got a little bit more leeway on what goes down. Um, anything considered small game. But no, I can't just go pop a deer because, A, I have a shotgun in my hand and B. Yeah. It's definitely not in season, and people like deer. And that you definitely don't want to shoot a deer with a shotgun. <laughs> deer was just a random pull, <laughs> but that, I didn't that, know if it was that, like bird season. I wonder if there's some. Uh, there's got to be somebody who didn't know what they're doing and shot a deer with a shotgun. That had to be. There's rough. shotgun season <laughs> in Minnesota for deer. Yeah. How does that work? Oh my slugs. god! It's the okay. slugs. But how do you? But how do you get the meat out of that? If it, I mean, it's got to obliterate the thing. What in the world? It's point and I mean, click. <laughs> uh, see how it goes. All right, everybody down the, the quiz. I think we are. All right, cool. I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll in five, four, three, two, and one. We're done. All right, cool. Let me show the results. Number one, which social media platforms are you on? So it looks like uh everybody uh, that answered is on LinkedIn. Um, most of you are on Instagram, five are on Facebook, only two on Twitter. Oh, interesting. I'm a big Twitter fan. I like that one. I don't There's understand more on TikTok Twitter. than Twitter. Interesting. There are more of you on TikTok than Twitter. Now I can understand it because TikTok is entertainment. It's videos. It's really easy. People love that. But I'm surprised that more on TikTok than Twitter. Instagram seven, like I said, Snapchat. On. Is Snapchat still a thing? I never got on Snapchat. I never really kind of that was my thing. Still, still. Going oh yeah, it's still alive. Snapchat okay. never was yeah. really a thing. <laughs> and then we, and then we have, one, then we have one other. Somebody still on MySpace, or are we on something else? What are we talking about? Oh, YouTube. YouTube. You oh, YouTube. Yeah. YouTube is a Good social point. media platform. Regardless of That's what you guys true. think, there's community. You can chat. Major it's a oversight. bigger one than any other thing you put on there. 80% Major of adults oversight. use it. <clears throat> well, isn't I know there, that, I was going to say, isn't, isn't there another one that's out there where you have to be invited to? Wasn't that a big thing for a little bit? Oh, oh Clubhouse. Clubhouse. We talked uh, about uh, Clubhouse here forever. Yeah. What, what happened to Clubhouse? Gone. I, yeah. I think it's Vine. Parlor. <laughs> is that still around? The old conservative platform that uh, they started oh, yeah. joining like six months ago. I haven't heard much about that. We got the truth one coming up. We talked about that. We'll see if it happens. That okay. So very good. So so interesting. So so half of you are on TikTok. I'm on TikTok as well. Um, I think that people in general prefer watching videos to anything else, which I think is why something like TikTok and YouTube are so big because it's just an easier form of content, easier form of consuming content, more enjoyable. I think. Okay. Question two. What about which Pinterest? Yeah. Pinterest, Pinterest uh, Pinterest? yeah, it would be, but I, I left that one off too. That's going to be in the other category, Aaron. Sorry about that. My wife never got on Pinterest. I mean, by the way, anybody also heard of Marco Polo? Heard of it. I don't know one? anything about it though. Really fun pool game. So <laughs> really fun pool game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so uh, so my, my wife's friends are in the Marco Polo and they're trying to get her on it. And she's like, no, I don't want to do it. Apparently, you record a video of yourself saying something to your friends, just to this group, and then they all get the video. So it's like these people are just posting videos about what they're doing in life, but it only goes to their little group of friends in on the Marco Polo platform. Oh, Snapchat. We, my, maybe, but my wife is like, this is stupid. We're not doing this. So, yeah. She's like, why am I just watching videos of my friends talking about their day? This is stupid. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> I hope none of her friends will watch this show, by the way. That, that could be bad. Um, I don't think they will. Anyways, all right, question two. Which social media platforms do you spend the most time on? Oh, look at that. Half of you spend most of your time on Instagram, which is easy to do. Pictures and videos, super easy to, to flip through that. Um, I think that TikTok and Instagram are kind of rivals in that regard. I think TikTok, though, is more enjoyable just to fly through and see stuff. But And most people on Instagram, interesting. Okay, question three. Is it possible to live in America without social media? Two of you say absolutely. 
Mm, okay. Uh, five, you say yes, but be challenging. And one of you, I'm going to go, this is Nico, says not a chance. Did I get it right? Nico, did you say Yes, because I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, <laughs> that's right. Uh, this actually do... goes back to a kyle point uh if you own a cell phone in this country you are on a social network because iMessage and all of the android messaging backends are social networks just not quite the same but you're right and, uh, and, and everybody has a cell phone so i'm pretty sure that uh see it's either Stretch. enjoy your double booked appointment but everybody pretty much is on you know has a cell phone everybody does and because of that they're going to be on generally something and uh it's just it's just i don't you know who said okay I'm my curious. kids who said absolutely you can live here without Facebook social account. media yeah really? greg oh yeah, you can live without social media absolutely well i'm i'm on linkedin and i I'm there during the workday, but I really rarely check it. I outside of work hours, occasionally I might, you know, have a few moments where I, I do look something up, but it's just something that I did never, I, I did have a MySpace, but I, I didn't keep it up. <laughs> I signed up for Facebook basically because uh, a tournament that my friend puts on has the updates there and he got sick of me texting him saying, Hey, what's this? What's that? So he's like, if you, if that you want the info, you have to sign up. So, I, but like, yeah, I, I have, I have no, you know, interest. My, my friends, I get it. They put pictures of their kids up there and, and sure it's cool to see, so, but so do you, I need you personally it? No. outside of LinkedIn, you personally don't use any social media. And wow, okay. for about a month before the, the guys tournament, I'll, I'll get the update. <laughs> you'll, you'll jump in for a month and then you're, and then you're bouncing again. Yeah. Interesting. So, so I mean, you're I, on I'm, social media though. <laughs> that's right. The answer is yes. Huge presence. <laughs> Huge presence. The question is, can you possibly do it? And you do it because it's impossible not to. No, it's not impossible not to. For convenience, I do, but I easily could do without that. <laughs> right. I mean, it's not. Trust me, I have no problem being die, annoying to my friends. It. <laughs> I mean, there, no, there may be some, wait, some farmers really? out there that don't have social media and some other folks, but I think, you know, it's going to be, I think it's going to be very rare and more people are probably going to say they can't live without it. Unfortunately, like that it's going to be more common than not. Meshach, we're talking about social media and uh, its influence. And my, my daughter challenged me this week, this weekend to go one hour without touching my phone. So we'll see <laughs> if I can pull it off. It's pretty bad you, that that was the challenge. It was only one hour. <laughs> Go rake some leaves, Trey. You'll not touch your phone for a couple hours. Right, but, but what do I? But what do I do when I work outside? I usually put in, you know, I put in music. Like when I mow my yard, so I can do that. So I'm just gonna have to listen to the birds or something. I don't know. <laughs> weird like that. Right, so maybe no, maybe, maybe go outside and do it with them and talk to them. Shooting them. <laughs> so so we'll see. But uh, but anyway, so question three there is it possible? To live? I think the answer is no. But that, that's what I would say. Not a chance. Um, and not and, and really be connected, I guess I'd say. But number four, how many social media platforms will people be regularly using in five years? I ask this because they're only going to, I think, continue to, to grow. Somebody's going to come up with a slightly different idea. They're going to you know put that out there. I mean, we already talked about a couple that are still out there that we're not even using. Like Pinterest is still there, but not a lot of people are using it on this call. I'm sure a lot of people are. We got Clubhouse, which I guess is still going. Um, Snapchat's still going. Didn't really, you know, don't have a ton of people using that. Marco Polo, which I just mentioned, you guys don't even know about. That's one that's going there. So how many, and, and the majority of you say six to 10, which is, I think it's kind of what we're doing now. So you guys don't think so, it's really going to change much beyond what we're doing now. For that, a question on that, is that how many will be available or how many will people regulate? Like, because- How many people will regularly be using on average? Again, I, I don't use a whole lot. I, I've got one, right? LinkedIn, but yeah. the people that and I Facebook. do know- And they, Facebook. And Facebook. And Facebook. And Facebook. Yeah. But the people that I do know that YouTube? are- Do you watch any YouTube more, videos? I do. And I'll admit, okay, so he's on YouTube. Okay. I did not consider YouTube to be social this media, is, but it is. This but the is, people this who is go the wrong direction, Greg. Pick one. They pick one or two or maybe a couple in that they space. activate, you know, actively participate in. So yeah. is it going to be so something updating? Regularly. Are you going to update eight, eight different ones or is it there's just well, a big well, enough audience to where warrant you can, eight? You can share one post and it'll go to different platforms. So you can totally do that if you're a content creator. And then if you're a consumer, I think it just depends on what you're going for. So for example, I go to Twitter when I want to talk about like news, like sports or politics or religion and get like interaction with community. All right, that's where I go for that. If I just want to be entertained, I go to Instagram or TikTok. So like for different purposes, I use different things. If I'm trying to stay connected with business. I go to LinkedIn. If I'm trying to stay connected with family, I might go to Facebook because they're posting pictures, like you said, and I'll see what's going on around that. So depending on what the objective is, 
I am going to different platforms to accomplish those objectives. Sounds exhausting. So. <laughs> it is. This is why I like your friends offering the challenge. You know, one hour. It is. You have you get so many different um, social media platforms, and then like in my case, I have Zen, and then I have my personal, and then I have Healthy Happy Hiker. So I've got three on With both Instagram one. and fi- Facebook for each one. Right. So. Right. That's it just right. I've got the podcast that I update and I've got different things. I didn't even think about the different accounts on each of them because on Twitter, mm-hmm. I have three accounts that I manage. So just remember yeah. to you're like also, and subscribe. <laughs> you're also only referring to, I mean, you think of the medium, right? Like it's the phone in your desktop, but what happens when VR takes off? I mean, that's the Facebook, why they're calling it meta is like, okay, all of a sudden right. I'm uh, what's a ready, ready player one living in that universe. Like, that's a whole nother medium that's definitely on the horizon. I mean, that's, they're hitting the limit of what you, how do you communicate on the certain platforms right now? Like what, what's going to happen is <laughs> channel. Right? What is yeah. that? I, I saw that on your thing. What is meta? So that's, so Facebook is changing its name to meta and they're wanting to create well, a the meta parent universe. company. Like, yeah. So like universe what? metaverse, and it's a whole new, a like horrible VR name, driven. by the way, Google change themselves yeah. to alphabet. Like they're all oh, right, trying right. to say they're more than something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Ron Artest liked the name Meta. So <laughs> he did. I think Meta is a pretty good name because it gives them this whole, like, uh, uh, it's not just metaverse, but it's also this whole idea of kind of the data outside of the data. The data relates mm-hmm. to the data. So I think that's, I think that's a pretty good strategy myself. I would have, yeah, I, I, I probably. I it's just, not as catchy though, but just the name itself, I don't feel like it rolls. Well, out. Facebook will still be Facebook. It'll, right. it'll they'll just have the like alphabet versus Google, the you know, so right. we won't, that won't change. It'll just be as they refer to the greater, uh, um, you know, uh, universe that they're creating, which literally it is kind of a vault. You know, one of the interesting things is, you know, how like you ever heard of like the, say, the Fermi's paradox? I think it was what it's like, why if the in if if time is almost infinite, if if the universe is almost infinite. Why have we not seen ev- evidence of aliens? Because obviously they would be out there in, in an infinite universe. Uh, and one of the hypotheses is that once a, a, a civilization gets to a certain level of technology, th- the virtual world is way more interesting. And so they just stop exploring. They stop communicating. Everything goes internal. And I always thought that was a bit far-fetched until the last like five years. And now I'm like, nope, it's perfectly <laughs> believable now because people are tearing apart the real world because of what they think in the virtual world and the real world is is, it's better than it's ever been in in like in measurable history and yet everybody thinks it's terrible yeah yeah well i would say this mishak anytime somebody can think of a possibility um then it usually is something that's going to happen relatively soon so uh pretty crazy nico what's so funny there there's some laughter going on Aaron, what's what in the world there's some chat room stuff going on here that i'm not a lot of meta reading. talk going on in the chat a lot of- <laughs> we're already in the metaverse it's, uh, it's yeah. so, you wouldn't yeah. understand it's where the youth is right now for you, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry i i said Coleman in the stream chat, in a video game <laughs> i said in the chat how long before facebook starts a that's so meta marketing campaign hosted by raven simone is <laughs> that so raven if, if you don't know <laughs> i know about that because i've got kids otherwise i would not have a clue uh, i'll admit that but because i, I have kids, a 12 year old daughter <laughs> yep and that's i have 13 and 11 so we're living in the same world all right back to the poll so six of you or, or we think that but we're going to be using six to ten which is kind of what we're doing now but i tend to think it's going to be more i have a feeling it's going to be more but we'll see i would go 11 15 i'd go that round but i just think i think there's going to be more options all right question five um, well, uh, who do you trust for your source of news? All right. So one of you trusts the legacy news, ABC, CBS, NBC. Uh, one of you trusts cable news. Nobody trusts social media. And six of you have an other. So do tell. What are the others? Uh, I mean, nobody. I, no, <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> it's all about nice to share. Put it in the chat, you know, I don't know. You got to <laughs> yeah, take it from it, everybody, right? It, it can't just be one local news source. You got to look at a little bit of everything, but I'm actually a big fan of foreign news sources on what's going on in the U.S. because I feel like they the look at what's going on from an Al outside Al Jazeera and BBC are great. Yep. Al Jazeera Which of is, is quite good. Mm-hmm. 
uh, um, Al Jazeera, I think, is that one's a risky one, I think. But uh, the BBC America is amazing. Deutsche Welle yeah, is one that a lot of people don't use, but that one's really good. It's Germany's yeah. version of like uh, BBC. Do you think that this preference of, of like, you know, what, what you trust from news source is generational? Yes. Like my I'll parents, for example, still watch ABC, CBS, NBC, Nightly News. <laughs> They haven't switched to Fox Fox News. That's what they 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 have not switched to any cable news. They literally still watch the nightly news on ABC, NBC, or CBS. One of those three, if not you know several of them. My kids get their news from TikTok and YouTube. If it didn't happen on TikTok and YouTube, it didn't happen. Didn't happen. (laughs) One hundred percent. That includes their room. (laughs) <laughs> it shows you how much power uh, um, these social media have, companies have over over um, defining reality, and that, and especially the, for the younger generations, you know. And think about that parenting. Like, you know, my kids right now, as I, like I mentioned, they don't have uh, a phone. They're not on social media yet, but they know about it because they're cousins, because they're friends, and eventually we're going to have to navigate that as parents when they, you know, when, when we allow them to be on social media. Somebody's there's some background noise for somebody. A woman speaking in the background. I'm not sure who that is. Maybe Raquel. Yeah, there you go. That's right. I was like, man, we're getting the full conference. Um, Trey, are your kids on Roblox though? Are they on Roblox? Yeah, it's a game. Mine are. No, because if your if your kids are on Roblox, that's that's my kids. It's not technically social media, but it is kind of social media. We're not a gamer family. They're not. They're not playing a lot of games. They have a couple on their phone, but it's like. Uh, but it's not the ones that are interactive. I'll say that. So they're, they're you know, simple ones. But you know, this is something we'll have to navigate and think about that from a generational perspective. I think of my parents who interact with my kids often. My parents see the world through ABC, CBS, NBC. You know, I kind of grew up when, when cable news started to become about. So I tend to watch like MSNBC, CNN, Fox News and kind of figure out where I think the middle is and all those types of things. And like you said, kids are going to TikTok for news. I mean, What's it going to be like, you know, in the next five, 10 years in terms of what people think reality really is based upon where they go for information? You know, it's going to be. I don't watch the news. I have no idea what's going on in the world. Erin's living in blissful Pennsylvania. That's what she's just just looking at the trees. It's too freaking depressing. I can't stand it. It can be. Do you not watch any of the late night talk show hosts like, uh, Myers or Corbin or any of them either. Really? Yeah, I don't, I don't watch it. Late night. That's where a lot of people I know Here's get their news. It it's so I bad. Know. I didn't even know that the last hurricane that went through had gone through. Like I had no idea. What are you a troglodyte? So, so this is so this is let's not call me. Let's let, I don't even know what that means. But anyways, let's uh let's think about this for a second. What's better? What's better, knowing everything that's going on and dealing with the emotional side effects of that or not having any idea what's going on? Well, how do you do it? I mean, given most of us are in the supply chain, how, do, how can you possibly pull that off? Like it's a global supply chain. Like a lot of issues that happen in the world affect our jobs more than any other. Like when I was just doing nonprofit oh, fire safety. Hey, Kyle, like great safety. question. Like, how well, do you I'm do on that LinkedIn. Thing? Okay. Uh, and like, like that kind of stuff, little things I, I do, I don't really, I don't really watch. So if the there is news to be that had, kind of stuff, it's like a hurricane. Yeah, so like a hurricane coming through, doesn't matter. Like it wouldn't like, well, that it didn't... does, but I never right. even knew that it went, that it was like the, coming. It wasn't bad enough in your area and you just didn't pay attention. Yeah. We don't get hurricanes in Pennsylvania. I well, think they, they do actually make their way up. I went through one in Boston this summer. Shut up, Kyle. All right. So <laughs> photos are it's not real. So 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 Aaron, what news you do know comes from LinkedIn? Like what you LinkedIn, are aware of is um, more comes from- occasionally I'll put on um is it Fox? Whatever the conservative news. Yeah, Fox news. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, I'll watch that. Um like my husband will put on the news for the weather. And so I'll see what's going on, but whether or not I digest that information is a completely different thing. Anybody listen but to I talk really... radio anymore? Like, like radio news, Nico, mm-hmm. Coleman? Maybe my mom does. Oh yeah, yeah, podcast, NPR. I'm a big NPR guy when NPR I'm in the car. 
NPR and WTLP are both like right in my area, so I, I listen to them a lot. I've been enjoying long form journalism through podcasts lately. Uh, that's mm -hmm. been pretty fascinating, um, pretty interesting content. Um, so I've been kind of getting, but, but think about like, like, do we consider podcasts like social media? I didn't even put that on there, you know, but a lot of us are now into podcasts or, I mean, there's just, there's just so many, I think there's more than we think. Even, than I would even argue that me. if you subscribe to a podcast, like I <clears throat> subscribe to two different podcasts, um, then yeah, they're social media networks because yeah. I talk to the people in the community. Yeah. I, I think it's interesting. And, like the, I think the whole point of having all of this, you know, like the chaos we're seeing, it's like, just like scientists have figured out that like actually more options is actually bad for your mental health. Like the people are much happier if they just like, I want a yellow car and I'll just pick the first yellow car. I see bump, get it. They're going to be happier. Statistically speaking, much happier. Right. Um, and I think the same thing is with, uh, so like the more options we have, the more harder it is for him to make decisions and the less happier we are, we are with those decisions. More comparisons, more, you know. Yeah, yeah, it just doesn't do, it doesn't work well for us. And I think the same is true for like sources of truth, the sources of media. The more that we have, the more that we start to feel like we need to figure out reality. And that's a re recipe for chaos because then we're just going to fall back on our own bias and not be happy no matter what happens. Whereas like, if we just say, you know what, let's just choose somebody who's really trustworthy based on some, some very, you know, strong metrics and just trust that person. And if the reality is different than that, then it's different than that, but we're going to be happier no matter what, you know, it's like a friend of mine was just like talking about some conspiracy theory stuff. And I was like, would you rather live in a world where that is possible as, as unlikely it is, is it, as it is that there's this worldwide conspiracy theory to get you to take the vaccine do you want to live in a world where that that's possible that you can't do anything about that? <clears throat> and that if that is true, there's way more stuff that's happening that you have no control over, or would you rather, rather live in a world where you just listen to the scientists and say, all right, the scientists are right about this. Let's not worry about it. Yes, maybe, but so, I want to be happy. I want to like my neighbors move on. So Aaron's, Aaron's approach might be the best one here of all of us. So just like, I don't care. I'm just going to enjoy my life here in Pennsylvania and you know, whatever. She's probably the happiest of all of us. I was gonna say, yeah. there's, there's probably some truth in that to an extent right it's when you go on vacation you can truly unplug for a little bit it's it's kind of a nice feeling i mean i don't know if i can necessarily do it forever but i think it's it's an interesting <laughs> idea to think about yeah to get all the off the grid back to isn't there a show called off the grid <laughs> naked and afraid yeah i think there's, my I think mother there's watches that show and i refuse to give it any <laughs> any attention whatsoever. But, no i, I Wait, think that because your mother watches it or because it's a bad show. Because of the whole like, concept your, of the your, show. Have you seen the concept of the show? You want to watch it with your show? mom? Seems like a good mom show. <laughs> good so I actually have watched it with my mother, and it's really, really awkward to say that I've watched, you know, softcore porn basically with my mother, which is what that show is. But okay, I, I didn't realize that. I just thought it meant like it's, oh, unplugged. Okay. So well, do you know what okay, Naked and Afraid go. is? I do know what Naked and Afraid it's is. It's Survivor. It's Survivor with naked people. I mean, okay. All right. All right. Oh. Played in a tournament. Mm -hmm. It's enough. not okay. All right. not okay. Folks, we have to pause on this because we're being interrupted by a professional yeah. golfer who wants to show off a shot, I think. Nathan Frazier, what's up, man? What's going on? Why are, we, why are we looking at this tree? What What is happening? Is that Nathan out there walking to his ball? This is yep. like when I FaceTime my dad on the weekend. He's always on the golf <laughs> course. <laughs> Nathan has, like, hey, Nathan has videographers up? now following him around. That's what's going on. Nathan has Nathan has a film crew now that's there. I mean, that guy's holding the film. You're not dude. playing, right? You're just watching him play. You're just filming him all day. Is that what's happening here? I mean, we appreciate the coverage. This is great. Can you zoom in? Oh, that's a terrible swing. Oh, <laughs> I'm just we got, kidding. We got some, we got some, we got some critiques in the, in the crowd. <laughs> it looked like a grip, grip it, rip it kind of swing. I mean, he picked the tee up pretty quick, so I'm assuming that was a good shot. You got, a, you got an a, amazing flex. You got right. a film crew now? What in the world? You got a you got a videographer following you around now? Is that what's happening? Oh, I noticed the time, and I had it pop up. <laughs> uh, just out here saving the nice. game again. How far did that ball did go? Hit? Yeah, did you hit the fairway? Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Are you carrying your clubs? What in the world? Oh, you just got your driver. Okay, I thought you were no, throwing, I just, thought you were throwing I, your... Sorry. I didn't oh, okay, want to the take go. time and put my uh, the bear on yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nathan, quick question. How many social media platforms are you on? I'm on LinkedIn, um, Twitter, Facebook, 
um, TikTok, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Uh, I'm not YouTube. on <laughs> <laughs> no, YouTube? That's about, no podcast you want to be listening to podcast yours okay okay so you're looking at you're looking at five to six uh for for mr fraser so we've been talking a lot about media and its impact so uh so that's uh that's interesting you uh you're, you're right Hold in the media there i think on what, what we're using my daughter uh challenged me to not touch my phone for one hour this weekend we're gonna see if i can pull it off so no no chance you're not even give me a shot okay so All I right. think uh, that. I tell you, I've never one thing I like about this call and, you know, this our business is I've never seen social media play an impact on logistics the way it has since COVID has yeah. affected us. We don't go to the shows. We don't go to the expos. We don't go to the conferences. And I feel like social media and podcasts and talks like this are my way of kind of staying in in the know on the market and what's happening. It's controlling the flow of information. That's for sure. Um, and people are starting to go back to conferences, but I think you're absolutely right. It's definitely controlling it. You think of FreightWaves TV, all the content they're putting out, controlling the narrative, um, you know, the different uh, the different platforms that are doing that now. I think you're right about that. It gives think, a whole I different think, uh, spin to his entrance now, you know, with him on the golf, like walking up to the golf tee. Like that was just him making us wait so um, that we know that Tranco <laughs> is in the house. Like, oh, Tranco is coming in with, with the fire. Coming in hot. Yeah, no, I uh, I saw it pop up. I didn't want to miss it, and um, <laughs> at least wanted to pop in. Well, I'm telling you, one oh, Friday, gonna I'm gonna friend. I'm gonna join the call, and I'll actually be in the office. I don't believe it. Not for the rest of the year. In fact, I'm hoping that we just do this from the course. I'll just get a guest host, and we'll just pop in like you're doing while I'm down there in Chattanooga playing golf with you. That's what we need to do. Sounds good. Yep. I'll see you. We, need to get that up. we need to get that. Yep. See you, buddy. We'll talk soon. All right. Question six. We're still on this poll. My goodness. Our hour's almost up. This has been great. Okay. Question six. Who has the most power when it comes to controlling information? Most of you think it's the social media platforms. One of you put other. Nobody put web hosting providers. Interesting. Nobody put politicians or nobody put users of the platform. So who put the other and what, what, what's the other? That was me. It was, and it was just money. Whoever has money, money whoever has a, a, a story to tell, if you will, that they think they can make money off of. Um, All right. Fair enough. So let me ask this. Nobody chose web hosting providers. That's it. I mean, that's kind of what happens um, to like, for example, Parler. They were on um, Amazon web hosting services and they got kicked off. And so their whole platform went down. So, so there's more company. power, the platform or the person who hosts the platform. But hosting is a commodity, so it's it's just you just trade it for one commodity for another. Kind so. of. There aren't a ton of platforms that can host the size of what a social media platform really needs. I mean, there aren't a ton. There might be more in the future. There might be conservative outlets. There might be liberal. There might this might become political, so the platforms can be on there. But I'm I'm just saying, like it wasn't like they switched overnight and it was right back up. It took a, took a little while to figure that Not out. Not easily. A to come in and, but not easily but it's not hard to set up a, a you know like a rack and it and and a tier one data center it's not hard you know but if you're if your content is is uh um you know radioactive basically you know then you got to go to you know some third world country which even there you know they've got backbones they got tier one data centers it's not it's not easy but you just have to have find really good people to do it <clears throat> And so, so yeah, I would say not so own. much because it's such a commodity. That's a good point. That's a good point. But I think it definitely is going to be based on the company's philosophy of the, the, the hosting provide the, the hosting platforms, you know, philosophy, political philosophies. I think it's what's going to happen. It's going to continue to be divided by that because some platforms are going to say, this is radioactive. We don't want it because it doesn't agree with what we're saying or we don't like what it's saying. And others might say, we'll take it because we want the revenue or it does agree with what we're saying. I think it's just one more way that it's going to create division, continues to create division. It's interesting. Yeah. Meshach silent? Oh my gosh. Hey, Trey. What? Well, Mic drop. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I yes, think, uh, I oh, think sorry, there's, sorry. there's some content sorry, that, you you know, there's, there's, there, you know, people are uh, talk. there's this whole wrestle about how do you control content on the internet and, and what refer, you know, what defines the, the public square and, you know, what defines con controlling the information and, and editorial. And it's just a really difficult question right yeah. now. And we're going to have to, 
overturn Section 230 and let the courts <clears throat> decide that because uh, it's uh, right now it's completely wild west. And uh, um, the only way to get the, get there is the is is the courts because the the, the uh, you know economics can't decide that it's yeah. not going to decide but think, that. But think but think about this. This is a fascinating topic because has it ever been illegal to lie in the public square, not under oath, but just in the public square to say something that's not true? Has it ever been illegal? always? Depends on what you're I lying about say, well, because there's pol- say. there's liability with certain lines. And, Potentially, but a lot of times it has to do with distribution. See, that's where kind of I think the, the, the part of it comes in is, is the distribution side of it makes it different. If I go out into, you know, the Wildwood Public Square and I say something that's not true, three people might hear it and nobody's going to care and we move on, right? But if I say that on a social platform where I've got a million followers, it's different, right? So that's, to me, that's the distinction. It's not the content because I don't think that we can ban people from lying. That would never even be enforceable. But when it comes to social media platforms, now we're talking about something different. And then who gets to determine the truth of the lie every time? I mean, these are big questions that are going to take a lot of working out. <laughs> and the same questions we've than me. always had. I mean, the same questions we've always had is what is On a truth much bigger scale? And what is, you know, like where's liability and where's harm? And, you know, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, just, it's just scaled it's in a way scale. that we have this imaginary thinking that somehow technology is somehow neutral and, platforms and algorithms are somehow neutral which is right provably yeah. false but like right, even right. back in like the walter cronkite days where like people actually trusted news sources it was like the onus was always on the consumer of media to source whether or not the information that they were getting was true or not and i think the problem is that just nobody does that now social media is not the problem i can tell whatever lie i want on or off social media and you know if you're not going to do your due diligence to see whether or not i'm lying that's your problem Mm. i mean that's how people think and it shouldn't be we should have a a onus to actually be truthful when we are speaking in any public forum but the internet is like it doesn't have so much information it doesn't have to be proven you just say it and then it's out there yeah yeah it's just the problem is you repeat the same lie over and over again it becomes truth so uh, we're not that logical and we can't be that logical when we have that much false information coming at us or misinformation and disinformation that's the whole point of having these few sources after world war ii is people realized how important it was to consolidate you know some some facts and have people lie have some liability there and has consolidate the, 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 you know, the, the knowledge uh, um, so that people didn't have to sort through all that stuff. Because once you start having people sort through all that stuff, you start going down the rabbit hole that took us seven decades to get through in the late 18th century, where you had yellow journalism, where people were believing crazy stuff. Uh, and unfortunately, the thing that really brought us out of that Unlike was, today. you know, a few very rich men who decided that they were destroying America and they needed to change their, their, their tactics. And they fired half of the journalism team across the United States so in every city and every state that was a major city. Uh, and that's when the tide turned. Uh, um, so it was kind of top down change. Do you have some, uh, like a source of that you could share with us? And then it changed back. About, have you, so you can put it in the chat. Yeah, there's some research about yellow journalism and 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 how uh, basically that tipped off seven years of war, basically, from the late 18th, uh, the late 19th century through World War One, through World War Two, through Vietnam, uh, I mean, Korea more so than Vietnam. Uh, yeah. um, and it was just like that that the, the, a lot of people tie that to a period of just all of this uncertainty and and, and disruption because there was a lot of economic uncertainty because the traditional agrarian society suddenly got converted to this uh, capitalist industrial society. And there was a lot of people that were disrupted, a lot of people that were unhappy, a lot of people felt like their livelihoods were taken away. Sounds sim- uh, similar, right? And, and then yeah. all of this, like these penny rags that were going around, these general journalists that were just basically stirring up un- 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 unhappiness and leveraging that unhappiness. and. Right. They created some crazy chaos. That sells. That's crazy. So, all right. So anyways, that's cool. I want to keep talking about that next week. We got a lot to talk about, but I want to show a few pictures real quick. So we're going to end with this weekend pictures for those that can stay. So let me share a couple of photos, things that have happened. Some of these are kind of interesting. So we had um, Maria uh, Paula Mantia. She's our implementations manager in St. Louis this week for a golf tournament. And so we took her up the arch, which is really cool. So she got to do that. Now, this is a cool picture I, I took. You can see the arch in here. It looks like the city of St. Louis is getting a flu shot. Kind of, I don't know, it's kind of looks like to me, like kind of looks like there's a, 
flu shot there. But you got the beautiful stadium over here. So great view from the arts. If you haven't been up the uh, Gateway Arch in St. Louis, you definitely need to do that when you're in town. It's only like 10 bucks and it's a, a view that's uh, pretty, pretty amazing. 630 feet up in the air and the arch is 630 feet in width as well. So pretty cool parabola. Another kind of cool view of the city of uh, St. Louis from, from the arch. My daughter likes to try to climb up the arch, uh, or at least take a picture looking like she is. So this is her, this is Naomi. Every time we go there, she's like, dad, let's do the picture. So she goes over, <laughs> she does that. We take, I get down the ground because I got to get super low because she's not actually climbing. She's on the ground, but it's a cool, fun, fun little picture for she likes to take. There's another view of the arch. I thought that was kind of a cool photo from, from underneath it. So neat stuff in St. Louis if you get a chance to do that. We got to play in the Flat World Logistics Tournament in uh, St. Louis here. We shot 14 under. We made three eagles. Moppy is unbelievable. She won long drive competition. She got closest to the pin. Uh, we won three skins because of her because of the eagles. So uh, that was pretty nice. Uh, a nice little take home, which was fun. But got a chance to, to play with her. She's amazing. And then I got to go on a horseback riding with my daughter. So they do horseback riding. So this is us uh, out on a trail ride. I got to ride a big, a big uh, draft horse, which was pretty cool. Um, so that was just this week. Had a lot of fun doing that. And uh, just something really fun. It's neat to see my daughters like controlling these beasts, these, these horses. Like there's no big deal turn them and all that kind of stuff. This is like their, this is their happy place. This is what they love to do more, more than just about anything is ride horses. So we had a lot of fun getting to do that. I got to participate. And then, of course, Kyle, you got to tell us what's happening here. And I, I got two pictures here. Notice that Kyle's son's face is exactly like Kyle's. I mean, it's kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. <laughs> my daughter, she doesn't know how to smile. Her daughter, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's all right. I apologize. It's all I good. Yeah, she's so working little. on learning how to smile right now. But yeah, we got that one. Like, she made, basically mirrors everything I do. So I'll do that one. That's a cute one. Or then big old smile. She's trying to learn how to work it out. What's her name? Nell. Nell, like is in Nelly, is in like yeah, is it yeah, N E L L E, oh, Nell. Okay. Oh, nice. Right. Or is in Nell Carter. Mm. Nell Carter. I think we named her after that's the a, Haunting of Hill. <laughs> that was just for Aaron because I knew Aaron who knew who Nell Carter was. <laughs> nice. All right, we got a couple more here, and then we're gonna call it. So uh, a fun day. It's uh, yeah. Go ahead and talk about this one too. Costume day at daycare. So that was their outfit this morning that she was all pumped about. <laughs> awesome <laughs> very cool we have some other costumes we want to talk about so uh nico all right what's uh, what's going on here so uh <laughs> for you those of y'all who don't know uh i am really into doing gaudy spectacles <laughs> so halloween is always a chance for me to go just too far on everything um this so actually we have a teenage mutant ninja turtle a princess and then what the heck are you doing i don't even know so i went as a demon Okay. All right. Uh, the, the sign on my face is supposed to be a room. Um, but yeah, it, I had, so this is day two of dressing up the day before I was actually a vampire and I had all this leftover white Ooh. face paint. And so this is what I did that day. This took two and a half hours to put on my face, by the way, because there's concealer, is, there's a base. And then See, there's I just put a jersey on paint. and I go, I can't yeah. do paint. Oh, you know. I did all that by just myself, like, too. I'm not, a, not a fan of putting paint on my face. It just gets crusty. And all right, okay. Very cool. So thank you I for thought you were that. a KISS band member. Kind of no, looks I like hate that, KISS. It? Oh, Me no, too. I hate KISS. <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of in that same vein, though. I, I hear where you're coming from. What, what, what you're Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle is that? Uh, so that is Donatello. I'm pretty right. sure if I remember my colors correctly. Uh, and, keep and then my daughter is Elsa. Elsa, of course. Oh. We have that dress too, or at least we had that dress. I'm pretty sure we don't have it anymore. This was one of my favorites that I saw. This guy here created basically his own little boy band group of dance. And like, this is dancing. You can see this on YouTube or, or Twitter or TikTok, um, where he's just walking around and all these, all those, uh, those things are doing the same moves he's doing. So I thought that was pretty clever. That's what I wanted to do. Actually, I wanted to be a centaur because we're thinking about doing, um, you know, the um, uh, Chronicles of Narnia. But my wife would not be the rear end and I couldn't make it. So it didn't work out. We didn't get a chance to do that. Bummer. I saw this one online. That looks pretty amazing. Uh, the zipper. <laughs> I know. I saw some pretty crazy costumes to share. So that was pretty nuts. I don't know why anybody would wear this. This just didn't look appealing at all. I found some of these online. Some of these are really weird. So that's kind of crazy. This kid goes as a fart for Halloween. I guess that's what that is. <laughs> <laughs> so with a little bullhorn with probably is making noises so i thought that was pretty pretty fun it's one of those fart guns 
that, from that, Despicable yeah, that, Me, the fart gun. Yeah, that's pretty awesome right there. So I like I, I like that one. That was that was cool. Some, now some of these are a little inappropriate. I can't even believe they sell these, but some people wear some of these weird ones. Well, first of all, we had Diana who's not here. I had to show that one. I was really hopeful she'd be here, but she's not. It's all right. But that was from last week. All right. But then there's a couple that are really weird. Like I'm not sure who's going as a banana peeled upside down because you don't peel bananas like that. You banana, they peel them right side up. Like this is completely wrong. And then actually, that's the better way to peel them. I've heard. Yeah, Seriously, yeah, it is. Well, that's how peeling monkeys them. peel them. That's sure. just educational, right there. You hold or the enjoyable. bottom and you peel it down. What? Are you serious? It's in nature, yeah. monkeys, peel monkeys peel them that way. You don't yeah. get gravity to help you with it. Pe what? It peels easy. Oh, we're talking about from the saying. stem. The you stem. See what I'm saying? Yeah. No, but I'm saying like just. Down. I'm just okay. Yeah, it's just it's it's so yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. that's long, okay. I'm not crazy. All right, but anyways, it's a weird, <sighs> weird costume. This one's super weird. Uh, we're just gonna yeah. And going. moving on. Yeah. Oh, we're done. So <laughs> <laughs> I sent you I saw, my picture. That was, that was oh, I'm oh, sorry. I didn't, I didn't get it. I'm sorry. Where, where'd you send it? Where'd you send it? Oh, Email. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, we'll just have to put that for next week when we do a Halloween. Okay. You know, Trey's got too like many I need bleach on my shit. eyeballs after some of those. <laughs> <laughs> those things are online. Like, think about that. When you search for Halloween costumes, those are the ones that popped up. And I'm thinking, yeah, that's naked and what afraid. the heck? That's right. <laughs> that's that. We've come full circle. All right, everybody. Hey, listen, it's been great seeing y'all. Have a wonderful Halloween. And we'll peace, see you next peace. week for episode 82 of uh, World on the Street by Lean Solutions Group. See you guys. <laughs> Look at that. Nice. Going out in style. I love it. There's Batman. <laughs> All right, see you nice. guys. See ya. <laughs> Bye.